So Kotaku died. The title here seems kind of hyperbolic, I it's guess, not... but it's not even really clickbait, actually, because Kotaku kind of sort of just literally died. And maybe the website will continue to function on a basic level and be profitable, perhaps. But the way it is right now, that's over. And oddly enough, I actually have a pretty unique individual perspective on why. Here's a basic rundown before I go in-depth on what precisely this means for the website. March 21st, which is yesterday as of mm -hmm. me scripting this, Jen Glennon, editor-in-chief at Kotaku at the time, abruptly resigned. Oh. Jen Glennon has a lengthy history working in the world of media. I really don't know much about her, so good at her job, mm -hmm. bad at her job, I honestly can't say. But this abrupt and unexplained decision quickly received context. See, Kotaku writers began losing their collective minds. I'll take a minute right now to clarify, that's very understandable. Losing your job is not an easy thing, especially <laughs> yeah. when you've sunk months or years into building your position at a certain company. We should all be able to sympathize and have some empathy here. That's not something to celebrate at all. And while those writers have not actually lost their job currently, they're probably going to. I'll explain mm -hmm. that in a minute here. So Jen Glennon resigns abruptly, and then both current and former staff at Kotaku start spilling the beans that GNO Media has redefined the entire website content direction to focus now almost exclusively on gaming guides, not activism-based editorial pieces or politically laced op-eds. And they Well, you don't want to know why? It's probably because the advertisers don't want to be associated with this shit either. Which, like, I, I, I'm going to have a very unpopular opinion here, but I totally support Kotaku's freedom of speech, and I don't like the idea that advertisers are trying to pull out because they're exercising their freedom of speech and talking about what they believe in. I think it's incredibly important that everybody has the right to have an opinion about something, no matter how stupid and reductive that it is. I think almost every single one of Kotaku's big editorial political pieces is completely wrong, and they're totally fucking stupid. But I completely respect their opinion, and I respect the ability that they have to say that opinion. And I don't like the idea that we should sit here and celebrate that they're losing advertising revenue because of this, potentially, right? Which is what I think it is. Because, again, remember what I said before, like, if you're, if you're happy about an unfair thing happening to somebody else, the only thing you have to do for that unfair thing to happen to you is wait. I don't like it whenever it happens to anybody. To be fair, though, I don't like it whenever it happens to Kotaku the least. I, I, I... Also there implemented a quota of 50 guides per week, allegedly. That news is getting very yeah. mixed reception right now. I've seen everything from good, that's a better direction, GNO Media is a genius for doing this, all the way to get woke, go broke, yeah. and even the sky is falling, who's going to tell the gamer chuds how wrong they are now? Ask different people about this and you'll get completely different answers because yeah. perspective here seems to be fully dependent on whether or not someone liked the individual politics of the Kotaku exactly. writers. There was a singular political slant at that outlet for many years, which is completely indisputable. And that Absolutely. simple litmus test will basically tell you... Absolutely, without a question. ...you whether or not someone is now celebrating all yeah. this or panicking over the decision by GNO Media to change the website's direction. Here's the fun part. It mm -hmm. turns out, if you don't believe me, I'm about to show proof of everything I'm saying. This game looks it fun. It turns out I'm actually uniquely qualified to speak on this topic and also have literal years of data to back up what I'm about to say. See, okay. Originally, way back when the channel first got started in the early days, all I did was make video game guides. Okay. I started with The Division, nearly killed the channel outright oh. when I tried to expand, but eventually I was producing guides for I basically every thing. single popular game release that happened. Destiny 2, mm -hmm. Red Dead Redemption, even Fallout 76, Cyberpunk, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Assassin's Creed, Borderlands 2, even more recently Elden Ring. I went from guides in one game to guides in any game, and I have the data now because of that to properly evaluate this whole situation. If you listen to a political activism-oriented gaming journalist right now, the sky is actually falling on their head. This because people don't want to hear what they have to say, because they give one-dimensional opinions that aren't valid and aren't resonating with the public that's the reason why the sky is falling it's because the content that they're making and the things that they're saying people don't agree with that's it the culture has changed like people have fought like the thing is that back in like 2012 2014 like woke people didn't have the same level of power that they do now so if you're playing the power dynamic of like 
well, they're fighting against like this large oppressive regime. Well, then it kind of works because they are kind of fighting against it. But the issue is that now they are the large oppressive regime and people see that and, and, and they don't like that either. Because, again, people, as I said, don't want to be told what to do. That's what it comes down to. People don't like being told what to do. People don't like being told that they're bad for playing a certain video game, that they're bad for liking certain games, that they, you know, Hogwarts Legacy, it's like you're supporting transphobia. Get the fuck out of here. Shut up. People don't like being told what to do. And I think that people are more okay with it if it's from an underdog. But the reality is that they're not the underdog anymore. They are the majority, especially in terms of like uh, in actual like uh, professional spaces. And so, yeah, people don't want to be talked down to by somebody who thinks that they're a victim whenever they have all the control. Decision is the Duh. worst thing in the world. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's a completely idiotic thing to do. How could they mm -hmm. ever think that an audience would go there for gaming guides to Kotaku? And it's I think the real problem is that the website isn't making enough money because the website isn't getting enough traffic. And the reason why it's not getting enough traffic is because the business model is broken fundamentally. Is blunder by GNO Media that can't be allowed to persist. I think it's a, it's a fundamental problem, However, like right from the top. With close to a decade of YouTube experience, tens of millions of views attracted through the production of gaming guides in particular, mm -hmm. and all the data at my disposal, at my fingertips to demonstrate this, let's take a look at the reality of the situation. Okay. Not the blind celebration, by the way, because someone thinks the writers they politically disagree with are going to lose their jobs, which they probably are. And not the brain dead outrage because a company made a calculated fiscal decision to step away from antagonistic, politically motivated content. Let's look Real. at what's really happening, okay? Like the actual down-to-earth reality, not one side or the other of an extreme. Here goes. Gaming guides are absolutely a viable genre of content. And here's a few examples. This is a five-minute, 50-second video I did for Red Dead Redemption 2. It is incredibly simple and merely showcases the location of five pieces of writing, I think, from back then. Mm -hmm. uh, explaining how if you go to all these spots, you can hunt an NPC that pretends to be a vampire. This took yes. me less than one hour to make and has garnered well over a million views since originally published. In the past 365 days, so one year, it's gotten 200,000 views. Wow. And this means that less than one hour of work six years ago is still producing reliable viewership, subscribers, and revenue today. And this is why YouTube is making so much more money than Twitch is. Or sorry, than, than, uh, than Kotaku is. This is why YouTube content creators are so much more agile and they can completely outperform Kotaku. Because really, Kotaku and these other websites have been replaced by YouTube content creators like Upper Echelon, like Radikosker, like uh, Mortismal Gaming, like Skill Up. They've replaced them because it is a better and more agile business model. Straight the fuck up. And do you know what? You want to know what really proves it? What's the biggest place? I'd say it's probably IGN. What is IGN doing now? Pumping out YouTube videos. That's basically the holy grail of content creation. It's called evergreen. And it holds true regardless of medium. Because articles with written content can do precisely the same thing. Sometimes they even can. better. Well, some of you might be thinking, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is a crazy high profile release. That doesn't happen every day, so it's not a repeatable thing. And you'd be right. Except for the part where you're completely wrong. See... That pattern is actually easy to replicate if you are able to quickly target new games and produce at least passably helpful content. Here's a tips video for a video game. This is also a really good point that he's bringing up, and I think that he's totally right. So what he's really trying to say collectively is that these types of videos are evergreen in a way that like culturally relevant at the time videos of, let's say, somebody being mad about, uh, you know, some political decision a game is. Like the videos for those games are really high at the beginning, but nobody is paying attention to them like a year later. Whereas guide videos for games that people are continuously playing will continue to be relevant for an indefinite period of time. So like if you're making all of your content that's like just uh, current events content, you're not going to have like those long form videos that people will go back to and watch in five years in, in the future. Called Frostpunk. Incredible game. It's about to get a sequel, actually, which is exciting. 
but it's nowhere near as popular as Red Dead Redemption 2. Still, a That's simple the, the city five builder, tips right? and tricks video I produced, also about six years ago, has continued to garner viewership this entire time, collectively reaching over 250,000 mm -hmm. people yeah, that's what I thought. and serving as evergreen content with drip-fed income and subscriber growth. See, yeah. this pattern is actually the norm. I did very few guides for Monster Hunter World when it initially came out, but when I did, things like this happened. How to mm -hmm. get Zora Magdarosa gems in armor. And this content oh. is extremely simplistic, mind you. Merely explaining how to get one resource with one method in a popular yeah. video game, right? It's really simple. Hundreds of thousands of views, hundreds of dollars, consistent subscriber growth. Yep. Let me just rapid fire these. Again, I have a lot of examples to draw from. Top five tips for cyberpunk, million views, evergreen. Tips for Borderlands, mm -hmm. evergreen, less than 400,000 views, maybe two grand over four years. Tips for yep. Red Dead 2, still going. Fishing guide for Red Dead 2, still going. Tips for Bannerlord, still going strong, evergreen. Mm -hmm. Tips for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which isn't even the most recent game in the series anymore as well. Consistent viewership, thousands of dollars over the span of years. Even a game like Kingdom Come Deliverance, Best Gear, An Alchemy Guide, and a money-making video, among others, all continuing to gain viewership even now, consistently, as they grow the channel and earn me money well after the fact. Yep. The list goes on. This is really just a snapshot. I have a ton more data. Why a video just... with less views get more money? There's a lot of reasons for it. Uh, I, I could spend 30 minutes explaining it. Disposal to prove this, but I'm just trying to condense it as much as I can. But the point is to demonstrate here. Think guide 10 different content factors. is a consistent and reliable method of attracting viewership even more than half a decade after whatever game it is initially came out. While the channel has completely changed... I'm worried that Kotaku won't even be able to pivot because of how much they've damaged their brand. I don't know if they're going to be able to like earn back the respect of consumers again, but I think that maybe they will be able to because IGN was able to. I, I feel like... How many of you guys agree with this statement? IGN used to suck, but recently the videos they've been putting out have been kind of good. Because I hear that sentiment a lot whenever I watch them myself. And by the way, not all of them. They still make stupid decisions, and some videos suck. Like, for example, the Resident Evil 5 video really sucked. But overall... ...changed direction since then as well. See... I've done the grind where you produce guides, mm -hmm. and I've also done so the more journalistic thing, I guess, where I so publish I. my opinions about games or topics instead of giving information on them, even though that still does often contain a lot of information, but still. I can tell you with no shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. here, possessing all the data necessary to prove my point, the video game guide content is much more consistently profitable than op-eds or think pieces or whatever the fuck Kotaku writers have been doing for the past few years. For me personally, I actually found the opposite to be true. I found that I made way more money and I got way more views by making videos that were more about like my opinion on things versus guides on games. But I think that the reason for that is because also I was focusing on one game and that game kind of died in terms of like people's interest of consuming guide-based content on it. So this is my original YouTube channel. And it had, how many views has it gotten in the past 30 days? Uh, 30, uh, it's got 35,000 views. I found that, like, making videos with, like, my opinion and, like, talking about why his earnings have such a wide error margin, a lot of reasons. Like, my, my channel's doing great, I'm doing really well, I'm happy. But what ends up happening is that, like, the reason why my channel is doing well is because the majority of my videos my audience even if they don't agree with it they appreciate it and people watch videos that i make even if they think that i'm wrong in the video or they think that i'm stupid they will still want to hear and want to watch the video and i think that's what ends up happening whereas kotaku people don't appreciate their commentary people don't want to hear it they don't agree with it and they don't like it that's the real problem with kotaku's commentary it's not commentary, it's th the popularity of what they're saying. And very simply, it sucks. Base versus cringe takes. Yeah, exactly. You have sort of dragging my attention, even on a subject? Yeah, yeah, sure. People don't really care about them. Yeah, well, because people don't agree with what's being said. I disagree with you on a lot of topics. You present your views in a ways that I can tackle them in my head. How you convince me on some things like AI? Sure, right? And like, that's always what I do. And, and I found that, like, that is a better idea for me because I think that that has a higher ceiling than, like, making game guides. 
But Kotaku, I don't think that they can... The problem is that their politics are not popular. So, like, if you make videos about, like, how, you know, actually having, you know, like, super woke characters in game or, like, race swapping a character is good, the majority of people that are consuming content online disagree with that. And the reason why it doesn't bother me and it doesn't affect me, really, whenever I make videos or say things that are bad is because I'm always making new content. So, like, if people are disagreeing with something and they're mad about about something that I said, it doesn't really matter because it's going to get replaced in six hours. So, who cares? You want to talk about stuff? Um, I appreciate it. If you don't know about it, you just won't talk about it. I do. I do try to only talk about things that I understand. Uh, obviously, I think that some people say that I don't, and you know, like. I personally think that I'm 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 informed enough to where I'm confident in my opinion, and there are things that I I don't talk about because I am not confident in my opinion. To be clear, the more highbrow journalistic mm -hmm. stuff certainly can be a hit sometimes sure. periodically. I have videos that do exceptionally well that discuss things like TikTok and social media, AI, yeah. general technology, and more. But video game guides, and I say this as an indisputable expert on the subject are an extremely reliable source of viewership if you can produce them quickly and if you can properly fill them with information. This and if decision the, by GM... And if there are games that people care about. Media is Making some, WoW games, it's, uh, games, uh, WoW guides, it's not going to help you. Misguided blunder, regardless of what these writers yeah. are screaming about on Twitter. This is not some horribly ill-informed mistake. This is a viable business decision that can absolutely result in high paying, consistent traffic with low effort and a lot of frequency. Extremely reliable profits, really, for Kotaku, if, it, if it's executed properly. I don't know if it will be executed properly, but as a basic foundation, it's a viable strategy. However, and this is a big however here, that doesn't mean that the whole situation is good, and it doesn't mm -hmm. mean I'm sitting here happy. See. Part of the shift is requiring 50 guides per week from each of their staff writers. And yes, I know my audience dislikes Kotaku and their writers significantly, but let's keep our feet firmly on the ground. If here you have 50 guides per week, you're going to have bad guides. That's too many. People won't be able to keep quality standards up. Lose track of reality simply because we disagree with them. 50 guides per week? That's just untenable. That's mm -hmm. completely impossible to do and effectively forces them to plagiarize. See. Guide content success is directly proportional to its speed and its relative information. Yes. You have to be quick, and you have to put things in that players genuinely want to know but don't already know. Do that, and you're golden. Exactly. You cannot possibly do that yourself, at least not properly, 50 times per week because there's a lot more that goes into it, right? You actually have to mm -hmm. spend the time to find the information to put in there, or you have to plagiarize it. So, like, they're basically being forced to plagiarize with that criteria. It basically means that writers will be forced to take information. Yeah, somebody says the theory is they don't want to quit. Yeah, there's a, a conspiracy theory that actually the main company just wants to put so much pressure on the employees that they quit the company entirely so they don't have to pay them severance or any sort of unemployment or anything like that. ...that exists already from other outlets, which I guess... Just make the environment so bad that they leave. ...already, like the aggregation side of things. Yeah. They would regurgitate things that exist elsewhere which depletes the value of that article and the article it's mm -hmm. based on already, or stretch out what they find into multiple articles instead of one highly packed, information-dense write-up, which more than likely destroys the potential for this shift to actually help Kotaku from a business perspective and makes this whole thing a lot more likely to fail. See, my guess, and it's a fairly accurate guess here based on context, at least in my opinion, this is an excuse to fire everyone. The fundamental yeah. business decision to shift over and focus on guides is valid and do not let a single journalist tell you it's not. They simply don't know what they're talking about here or their critical thinking is obviously clouded by anger right now. However, requiring 50 guides per week is not valid and the only actual purpose of that would be to overwhelm the writers to a point where they can't keep up and then, I guess, fire them. That in I think that their opinions are valid and also invalid. It depends on the guides and it also depends on the commentary and editorialized content. The problem isn't that Kotaku was writing editorialized content. The problem is that Kotaku was writing editorialized content and nobody liked it. My view is extremely stupid. I know some people will celebrate this and say they're getting what they deserve and I understand that mentality, but guys, jacking up the requirements of a job to be impossible just so you have an excuse to end someone's employment is like super fucked up. Keep in mind though, 
I agree with him, but at the same time, these are the same Kotaku people that were trying to find the real names of the guys that were in the Sweet Baby Discord. They would very quickly get you fired from your job without a second thought and pat themselves on the back whenever they find out that it worked. Never have sympathy for a person who wouldn't have sympathy for you. We can disagree with someone politically and still acknowledge when they get completely shafted by a greedy company. So I hope that everyone... I know it sounds brutal, but that's the way that I look at it. I think to myself, if somebody if somebody was in my position, if, if, if you know, the shoe was on the other foot, would they do it for me? Absolutely. Like, if they heard that, like, I got kicked off of YouTube or I got banned or something like that, they would be celebrating it and they would be happy. So fuck them. Yeah, they literally tried to cancel you. Yeah, they tried to shut me down. They tried to get people to set. They tried to get my my sponsorship with Capcom pulled because I had the audacity to think that Sweet Baby Inc. might not necessarily make every video game better. And I even had the audacity to say that other people had the right to have that opinion. So yeah, is able to make that distinction here and now. It is completely valid to shift Kotaku in the direction of gaming guides. These sure. whining, screeching journalists don't have a leg to They're stand on in a disputing second. the exactly. validity of Absolutely. that decision. But requiring them no to basically plagiarize or produce horrible content just to keep up you get with what that you quota, that is idiotic. It really is. Yeah. And either means that the company is screwing them over on purpose or making a serious blunder when it comes to content pacing. My guess, they're creating a reason to fire people as they execute this Fuck shift, them. but with two sides hell-bent on proving the other side wrong, it felt like a good idea to look at the situation and calmly explain yep. that both sides are, in fact, wrong. The journalists are completely full of shit in their complaints mm -hmm. about the basic decision-making. This is a valid and potentially highly profitable shift to make. But the weekly requirements really are a complete disaster in their current form. It it's should insane. not be defended yeah. as a great move to salvage the sinking ship. Kotaku just died, not as a general publication necessarily, but as an avatar of let me push my ideologically driven opinions on you ignorant viewers which was the consistent atmosphere it managed to cultivate for years. Absolutely. Right? That's just, that's what Kotaku was. It was all the gamers suck and our audience are losers and idiots and look how wrong they are. And this is what you should think. And this is what I think. So like, it was just, it was so, I don't know. It was so politically driven and it just, it came through in every aspect of their writing. That seems to be legit. Rip Bozo. I'm sorry guys, but I'm the kind of person who celebrates whenever bad things happen to people that I don't like. I do. It doesn't mean I want them to happen. But when they do, I'm not sad. A pack tastes good? Yeah, it sure does. Rest in piss, you won't be missed. Ultimately dead, as their parent company shifts in a new but kind of understandable yeah. direction. Even if the requirements they've implemented while doing so are extremely bad mm -hmm. and will probably, if left in place, make the whole thing fail. That's it. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. We have a channel merchandise line that's open till April 10th. After that, the spring collection will be gone, so get that while it's still there. Locals and Patreon, monthly subscriptions, a VPN deal, etc., etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night. There it is. Totally agree with them. Absolutely. 100%. The game dominance, yeah. I mean, let, let's talk about why Kotaku really... This is a great video, and I think that he brings up a lot of good points with his guides. Um, I, I had the opposite experience, but I think that also, like, the video guides that I was making were more contextual than the ones that he was making. So, for example, like, WoW guides become outdated over time, so it depends on the kind of guides that you're making. Yeah, honestly, I uh, didn't pay shit that said video. Gameplay was too good. The gameplay was good. Absolutely. Uh, that Mercantante lady is going after Melanie Mack. I guess she wants an easy win. Uh, I don't know what she's doing. It doesn't really matter. Your guys were kind of niche, not going to lie. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I was really into like a very, you know, specific individual thing. And that's what I like doing. But yeah, this is my perspective is that I have no problem celebrating the demise of a person who would celebrate my demise. I don't care that it is, it, it, and, and should it be like this? No, it shouldn't, but it is, and ah, oh, too bad.